Francis Coe there. Uh, those chemicals are just some of the challenges facing crews trying to assess the damage. For more, we're joined from Boston by Fu Pong Chong. He's a professor at Beijing University of Chemical Technology. Uh, professor Fu, let, let's start there with these five that she just mentioned. Obviously, there's this cocktail of mixture there. Which one gives you the greatest concern? Uh, the chemical we are con concerned the most is uh, sodium cyanide. Uh, sodium cyanide is a powder, uh, but it is a water reactive, meaning that uh, if it gets in touch with water, uh, it will produce some kind of uh, hydrogen cyanide gas. When people inhale the, this kind of gas, uh, it may block your central neural system to function properly, and uh, people may die by this kind of uh, contact. It so that, uh, that's the most uh, dangerous or most uh, toxic material or chemicals in that uh, port area. Uh, given your experience, uh, as you look at this mysterious white foam, we were just showing it on the screen that uh, came with the first rainfall there in Tianjin. A lot of people uh, expressing concerns about it, some saying it's causing a burning sensation. Should they be concerned? Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, the pollution is more likely than uh, further explosion because uh, uh, the rain water, when they contact, get in touch with uh, cyanide, as I mentioned, it will create uh, the short-term toxicity. And uh, for other uh, material or the chemicals, uh, unless they are like uh, active metal, otherwise the rain water will not create any further uh, explosion. Um, we, we were talking about phenol uh, being detected in the water. What are your thoughts about phenol? Is that a major concern? Uh, phenol is uh, another toxic chemical. Of course, um, it is very toxic, not only to the humans, but also to the other uh, uh, living system in the ecosystem, like the aquatic life, birds and animals. And uh, in the future, probably it will uh, through the go through the uh, food chain to to be toxic to the human being. Um, you were talking about the future. If you look at, at places here in the United States that have dealt with chemical contamination, uh, there's there's Love Canal, of course, about 22,000 tons chemical waste dumped into the canal back in the 40s and 50s. Back in 1982, the government finally said it was safe for people to live there again. Then there's Times Beach, which was polluted with dioxin. That's in the U.S. state of Missouri completely evacuated in the 1980s, still a ghost town today. They say people can never move back. So those are some extremes, but what about your thoughts on, on when it might be safe for families to return to this area? What are we looking at? Thousands, of course, have been displaced. Uh, it is too early to discuss about uh, the possibility for the people to return to that uh, damaged area, because uh, uh, as I know that uh, even we do not have the inventory for the chemicals stored in that warehouse, which has been blown off, uh, so that uh, a careful investigation about uh, what kind of chemicals uh, were installed in that uh, uh, region will be more uh, important than we uh, talk about the uh, possibility for them, for people to move back. Uh, it is not. Uh, uh, should not be discussed at the moment. All right, Professor Fu, thanks so much for your analysis and your observations. Appreciate it.